Hi, welcome to Deus Ex Mankind Divided. We are going to be, well this is a big one, we're going to be doing the bank, including the vaults, although not the actual heist quest, uh, and the executive safes. The third floor I've covered in the Samad Zap quest, so click the playlist on the top right now for access to that. But the first keycard, I think it's the Tarvos keycard here, although we'll check when we get there, is in here. Watch out for going behind the counter before you've spoken to this chap, it's a restricted area. But when you do, you can buy some crafting bundles from him, I always do. Uh, and then when you go to leave, he'll say, this is in Prague 1, he's obviously downstairs in Prague 2, um, but I'll show you how to get it in Prague 2. But say yes, I'll give him some neuropazine, and he will give you free access downstairs and switch off all the security. Then if you've got Ghost, you can hack his computer and uh, have a little look at stuff there. Nothing very much in there of any interest though, sadly. But make sure you Ghost, because there's a policeman outside and he'll shoot you in the face while you're hacking otherwise. Anyway, click the painting, uh, and that will get rid of these frag mines over here. Um, what, uh, there's a safe here that you hack and the key cards in there. Um, but what are we going to need here? You're going to want remote hacking as an absolute bare minimum. And if you haven't got hacking level 5, you're going to need a handful of multi-tools. Um, because the vaults and the bank and the safes and other stuff have a few level 5 locks. We'll get some codes from them, but yeah, look, there's the Tarvos key card there. Um, you can also go through that vent, and uh, if you do, there's a key code on the other side. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, this is what happens if you come here in Prague 2 at night time. Um, you'll want remote hacking here as well, uh, and Ghost obviously is going to be helpful. But go down there, hack the camera, camera photo, uh, and then go in here and get into the safe. That way, there it is. Uh, I've already taken it apart. Now, if you go into the other side, you can see I've punched through the wall there, and look, there's the dude just sitting there chilling. Hey, buddy, I'm robbing your shop. Is that cool? Apparently it is. There's the painting. You click that, as we know. Anyway, go through here into the vent, and you will come out in the wine shop, I think it is. Um, if you go through here long enough, watch out for the camera at the other side of that. Uh, you'll want to remote hack that too, or shoot it with an EMP pistol or whatever, but then if you hack this door, uh, it takes a little bit of time, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, in here is a another safe. Shut the door behind you so that you can hack that safely. Ah, safely. Safe. Uh, for some reason it wasn't locked, but there's a pocket secretary in there, and that's got a code to one of the vaults. Uh, Granny's money. And that's 5641. Anyway, when you're done there, ghost your way out, or hack the uh, camera again, or whatever you like. That's Hemingway's Fine Spirits. There we are. It's just the other side of the road from Tarvos, as you can see. Now we're going to go to the Libu's Apartments for keycard number two. This is the Picus keycard. You want to go up to apartment 94. There it is. It's just up on the first floor. Second floor, if you're American. We start at ground. Uh, don't miss this little room in the back here. It's got a computer and some other goodies. Uh, in the bedroom, there's a picture there. If you move that, you'll find a safe behind it. Hack that. There we go, quick hack. And uh, in there is key card number two, the Picus Fault key card. Yay. Now, number three, you have to, uh, and there's also a pocket secretary with some gobbledygook on it. I had a look around on the internet, but there's no useful information. Now, for number three, you'll need the mystery orcs. This requires that you speak to Collar after you do the time machine quest in Prague 1 and then do some stuff for Saraf, you basically just go to your apartment and get on uh, the phone to him. But come up this way, it's between TF29 and Apartments 33 and you go in here, you'll find Vadim Orloff and he's got the Taiyong medical card on him. He's also, there's a blueprint for the nanoblades uh, on the floor next to him, but we'll get that from the vault. Uh, and in the safe, there's Jensen's medical report. Um, now, let's to the bank. While you're here, uh, we want to pop over here. This is going to let us open an account in the bank if you don't have the Casey mod and don't have 10,000 credits to blow. Switch off the TV in this room here. You might have to shoot that glass to get through with a silencer or something like that. Or you can go up the other side. Uh, you can also jump onto the top of the uh, thing in the middle of the bank area. This one here, you'll need the Icarus Dash for that. Uh, this is the only place you'll need Icarus Dash, so it's completely optional. But there we are. Get a grab on there and you'll get 400 experience for getting up to the top of that. But I've already done that. Now I actually went into the bank first to do the safes, but we'll do the vault first since you might not care about the safes, you might just be here for the key cards and the vaults. There's a few ways into the garage and down to the vaults. You can hack this door, uh, you can punch through the wall back there, and you can remote hack the big gate at the front. I would not recommend remote hacking the gate because it's going to be really hard to take the guard out. I wouldn't recommend going through that door either because as you'll see there's a... here we go, I'm going to open it in a second. There's cameras, there's people, it's just a bit tricky uh, to go in that way. It's 
very, very easy to be seen. So instead, jump in through here. No one will hear you when you smash that open. Go to the left, uh, and you will drop down on this side. From here, just make sure the camera isn't looking at you, and then get behind this car and move to this car, then along to there. You'll have to target that, and you can open the door remotely and scuttle in. Now, when in here, jump up here and open the vent. Boop. Uh, and then just jump around and make some noise, and one of these guards in the security room will come to investigate. Uh, wait for him to come around, I just cut like the waiting for him there, um, it'll take a little while. Make sure the other guard isn't looking at you, shut the door very quickly, uh, loot him, grab the pistol which seems to always fall up there, then move that bin and you can come in this way around the back. There's the other guard there, sometimes he's sitting at the computer which is actually a bit of a pain, uh, because when he is sitting at the computer you can't, um, don't forget to uh, black out the lights as well. When he's sitting at the computer for some reason it never gave me the takedown prompt, I don't know why. Um, very annoying. Anyway, uh, loot him and then in here is the security computer. Now there's a code for the secu security computer that you can get, uh, I think in the bank, I forget where we're going to get it on some of our travels, but it's never been locked for me, I don't know why. Um, so I've never needed it, but switch off the cameras, uh, you can open the door if you want, disable the alarm panel and all that good stuff. And there's another computer to hack here for a little bit of experience, I don't think there's anything interesting on it, but we'll double check when we get in. Let's go straight to the control node, like that. Oh yeah, there's a security code for the back door, but actually we're going to get that off the chap who's patrolling around here anyway. Uh, now you want to disable uh, the alarms on all the cars as well, because you can loot them. There's not a whole lot of good stuff in there, there's like a smoke grenade and some credits and stuff. But sneak up behind this fella and club him in the back of the head. And this is why you don't want that front door open, because doing him in public, it's possible that he gets seen. He's got a pocket secretary with the same code for the security door here that we'll get to after we've dealt with all the cars. There's a smoke bomb. Um, um, sellable and some other bits and pieces but this door here leads down into maintenance we're actually going to come around here from the other side later on when we go into the bank it takes you into one of the vaults which is not great um, because you're in a kind of awkward position and it's very easy to get seen and lasered and it's just a bit of a mess now here is the one place you will 100% need remote hacking you've got to shut this fan down to get into the vaults I haven't found another way in if there is um, yeah I'd love to hear about it but Remote hacking seemed to be the only way. There's a code here, uh, I never found a code for that door. Even though a couple of the pocket secretaries suggest that they might be for the vault, uh, they end up being... There's some typos in here, actually, because quite often when the characters mention vaults, they mean the safes um, in pocket secretaries and in conversations. Uh, there's another laser grid to hack here, completely optional because the lasers aren't on, um, so you don't have to bother with that one. But we're going to now get all three vaults, so drop down a couple of levels here until you're on uh, by the first vault uh, here. And then hack this, it's only security rating one, so this shouldn't cause too many problems for you, just throw one point into it. Uh, most of these have um, credits, a couple of them have a tiny bit of experience, but it's generally not worth chasing the data stores in these at the expense of hacking software. Um, there's a pocket secretary in all of these vaults which gives you the code to the main computer. In here there's a bunch of Typhoon, Tesla ammo. This allows you to make uh, nanoblade armor but I or nanoblade weapons, but I already could. I'm not sure where I picked that skill up, but there you go, something nice. See, and it didn't make them cheaper or anything, so I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, there's a level five safe here, I think, might be three. Um, again, I think just credits on it. I know data scan software too, but yeah, don't blow too much software hacking these open. Um, I won't do on that one. That one's got a Praxis kit, three neuropazine. <laughs> Sorry, I completely forgot about that. There's the Taiyong Medical Vault. This is the one that you can only get if you've done the Mystery Orgs mission. You did have the password for that from the Pocket Secretary if you didn't want to hack it, but I tend to hack everything for the bonus experience. Anyway, we're going to drop down another level here, and here's another vault. I think this one's the Tarvos one. Um, when you've hacked it, uh, select Deploy. Um, yeah, just some credits in there. Uh, and ooh, there we go. Uh, in here there's a whole bunch of weapons and I actually ran out of carrying space. Uh, and there's a custom combat rifle in here as well, which is quite exciting. There it is there, but I couldn't pick it up. Uh, so I went off to sell everything um, and then came back. Uh, there's the rifle. It looks pretty cool. Coped as your combat rifle and it's fully maxed out as well already. All the points have been put into it and it doesn't appear to be able to take any mods. But since I'm not on a killing spree, it didn't seem relevant. I might use it in my next playthrough, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, now you can loot this place uh, very happily, don't miss all the pickups. It's super annoying, there's a p crafting part in there that you can't actually get to. Um, that really bugged me for some reason. Um, <laughs> just like the thing in the pipe in Gollum City. 
Um, pretty easy hack on the safe here, uh, but not much in it, just some armor piercing revolver ammo. Yeah, so, uh, and a computer here with some notes about Tarvos, I think deploying troops or something like that, I forget. Again, no codes, nothing special in here. But experience, so that's nice. Uh, now, finally down to the Pikers Vaults, and there's a huge amount of hacking software in this one, um, so this is worth going after. Um, and it's one that you can get very easily from the camera lady. Uh, don't miss that data vault, even though it's only uh, 55 credits behind there. And once you're inside, yeah, see hacking software up the wazoo. Um, all of the things. Uh, sadly, not three Praxis kits in one of them, but three reveal softwares. Uh, I think the reveal softwares are maybe actually in the safe. We'll find out, won't we? Oh no, just credit chips and um, micro tools. Yay. Passwords Newsmaker. Uh, again, nothing really of import there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. The only thing you need... Oh, and a triangle code. Don't miss the triangle code. I always miss the triangle code. There we are. Um, now, the only slightly tricky thing about this is the way out. But actually, uh, once you've got up to this level, um, you'll need to go to the vault. And the vaults actually have ladders on them. So you can climb up the side there, and that's how you get up to the next level. That took me a little while to work out, and I completely forgot I had Icarus Dash. But anyway, it's worth explaining how to get there, because you might not have Icarus Dash. Anyway, head back through here and into the garage, and you can get out safely. Just go through the door and you're out. So without further ado, we're going to head in and take the executive safe. So we're actually going to hack pretty much everything in here. I'm going to leave the third floor alone. Uh, as I mentioned, we cover that in Samizdat. So click the I on the top right if you need to see that, um, along with the mechanical puzzle clue. There's two e-books in the lobby, one there and one just behind the receptionist. Now, you've got to be quick if you want to hack the receptionist's computer. He doesn't have any codes that you can't get elsewhere. Um, but we're going to run into the boardroom here while he's still talking to his little friend. Uh, that's there on the map. Um, you can go in here without any trouble at all, apparently. Um, there is a pocket secretary in Prague 1 on the desk there with code 0831. Um, and there's another one which wasn't in Prague 1, but has appeared here now, 9593. This is going there in Prague 1. I reloaded a very old save, and you'll see this pocket secretary here. I don't know if it'll still be here in Prague 2, but we'll need that to talk to the account manager. For some reason, the account manager is a little bit buggy. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, see, no pocket secretary there this time, so very strange. Anyway, when you're done with that, uh, run over to the receptionist, and while he's still talking to this chap, use uh, Biocell and some Ghost uh, and hack his computer. Um, because experience. You can make a beeline straight for the node uh, and get, there we go, 9593 again. Um, now, when he's finished talking to his friend, you can go and use the code on this or hack it with Ghost either way, but for whatever reason, when you talk to the receptionist, he will allow you to, oh, and this guy here, the security, um, for some reason he won't go in. None of these guys will actually open locks that are locked from the right side or the wrong side, while other regular civilians will, which is odd. But open that so that he goes in there. That's just going to make life a little bit easier later. Um, but don't forget to use Ghost when you do it. Also, remote hack this dark wall, uh, the like frosted glass thing, so later you can take him out with impunity. Now we're finally going to go and talk to the receptionist. You can talk to him about a bunch of different stuff. In Prague 1, he won't let you see an account manager because the account manager isn't there. In Prague 2, he will, and he'll set up a meeting, but the door won't unlock. But it is Mr. Tomacek, it's this office here. There's a lady in there, if you go straight in, who's uh, complaining to him about something. You can actually loot this place clean. There's a pocket secretary there with a, another code on it. Um, and uh, then black out the lights and have a talk to Thomas. There we are. You can say client account. Now, if you've got the data stick from the apartment, you can use that and he'll become very apologetic. You can also bribe him and pay him 10,000 credits, or you can use a Casey mod for 500 experience and persuade him. All amount to the same. Um, in all of these outcomes, though, he says he will give you access to the third floor, but only when you bribe him will he. But anyway, give him two alpha answers and he will go, here you are, here's a code, and I'll ring up and give you access to the third floor. But like I said, only when you bribe does that work annoyingly. He also mentions the VIP vaults access. Uh, he gives you the key card A, um, but it's not the vaults, it's the uh, executive safes. Anyway, push the button under his desk and then use ghost and you can hack the safe behind him. Um, there we are. And uh, in there is executive card B. Uh, so you'll want that. Then uh, shut the safe, 
and push the button and he won't be any the wiser that you were ever there because he's a moron. You can also knock him out if you want to hack his computer. Um, he doesn't have much of any worth on him. I think some credits. Uh, oh no, uh, elevator card. Um, but there's lots of elevator cards around. You don't really need that. Um, and we're not really going to use the elevator anyway. And if you really want to get into the third floor, you can do it with some remote hacking. Um, and climbing through the vents, but I digress. Uh, when you've done that and cleaned that out and hacked his computer, uh, head around here to the elevator. Um, this bin will be in front of the vent there, so uh, pull that vent back and then we're going to go across into the security room that we blacked out earlier. And that's going to allow us to switch off some cameras. Club that guy in the back of the head. Uh, get a pocket secretary off him, which has got a code for some other security machines, and uh, then loot the place clean. There it is, there. Um, I thought it was for in here, but it's not. Uh, there's also a pocket secretary on the side here, which gives you an employee number, which we're going to use in um, the security manager's office. Um, but first of all, let's activate the security uh, there and switch off all the cameras uh, as a bare minimum. If you can afford it, get robot deactivation as well, but it's by no means essential. As long as the cameras don't see you, the robots won't get alerted. Um, then back through here and uh, we're going to go down this way into the security man's office. Here is where you can get up to the third floor if you want to. See the elevator there? Just jump on top of it and climb your way up to the third floor and you'll get into the vents there um, if you don't have the keycard. But in through here and into this vent. Uh, now this is a little bit tricky. You're going to need a couple of bio cells to get through this cleanly. Um, first up, go straight past this guy uh, and there we go, switch the toggle. Um, the, this guy, he will get a little bit suspicious, uh, so use another biocell, club him out, but the uh, guard it will just stand there and not be looking at you and you can take him out too. Then uh, hide the bodies just in case, it's always good uh, policy to put them in there. I think that was an elevator card down there on the right as well. Was it? I don't know. Anyway, hack his computer, you can go to the messenger. I actually didn't even look at the mail, I probably should have done, but you can use ID4489 that we just picked up and he will switch off the laser grids on the third floor for whatever's that worth, for whatever that's worth. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, and then just pick the rest of his place apart, there's not much else of really any use in there. Uh, once you're clear of there, head back out towards the elevator where we came in, this is the way. Uh, there. And we're just going to ride the elevator up to the third floor. Like I said, uh, if you don't have the key card, you can just jump on top of the elevator from the uh, vent room we passed through earlier and then climb up and you'll end up in the vents that we're about to go into on the right hand side. Um, that I think is the laser grid that gets switched off. I don't know. Anyway. Well no, it's clearly not, is it? He hasn't done anything, the useless gimp. Yeah, there's some things in this which are a bit buggy. Anyway, we're going to go in here. There's a vent that you've got to move and a photocopier, but if you knock this chap out, um, he's got some good sellables if you haven't already been here. Um, like I said, I'm not really going to touch the rest of the third floor. There's a computer there with not much on it. Um, nothing in the way of useful codes, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but there's some sellables and some other bits and pieces in here. And the first time you come here, there's an awful lot of hacking software as well, I think. Um, so definitely worth a quick look. You can also head over into the executive's office if you want. That way up there, those level three offices is back into the vent above the lift, um, which is where you can jump up to. But let's ride back down to the second floor. Um, we're pretty much cleared out on the second floor now. There's one door left to hack if you want uh, the security officer's one. Um, but we're going to head down to the executive safes. First up, we're going to do executive safe room A. Uh, this one doesn't have a Praxis kit. Now, before you go in here, make sure the door's fully open. Um, also, look for the secret button on the back door to turn off the camera before you start any hacking. Um, you can hack this. I thought there was a pocket secretary in here with the code, but sadly not. There's also a terminal here. 1114 is a code that we picked up earlier, I think, from Tomacek's office, right? Um, but you can go straight for the control node here without too much trouble at all. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but you should have plenty of time. Uh, and there is a credit chip and a breach software in there, so don't miss that if you're chasing all the breach software. Um, some other hackable bits and pieces and some credit chips, uh, and don't miss the computer on the desk to actually switch off the camera and disable any robots. Robots! Lovely robots! Just some credit chips there though. Watch out, some things overlap, so you might be turning off uh, cameras, turning on cameras that you've already turned off, which is why you'll see in a bit one of the uh, robots is standing out because I accidentally flipped on his friendly fire. Oops! But only for a second. 
Anyway, this takes you into a security room uh, and to a ladder that you can climb up. If you follow that vent all the way to its natural end, that one's a dead end, but this way leads you round to... Uh, this is behind the laser grid to get up to the third floor. Kind of pointless, unless you need to get up to the third floor, but it's another route there if you need it. Anyway, go back into the first security room. Don't open the previous door yet. Uh, and then we're going to head out. Now that the cameras are off, uh, we can hack safely. Um, so, first of all, hack this room on the right as you come out. There we are, a little bit of experience. Uh, and this is the room we were just in with that grid there. Now go over to the other side. And we're going to get another key card, uh, another passcode through this door in the back. I always think there's security software in here, but apparently not. Case up there with some software in it. A wall you can smash through there, which is entirely safe to uh, take. And then here, a civilian with a code for one of the safes on him. See, again here it says Vault Code 2357. It's actually a um, regular code. If you don't have the implanted rebreather, you can either hack that thing on the wall or drop down here and flip the valve. There's some weapons and stuff down here, so don't miss those. And over the other side, a bio cell and... Maybe a hypo stim in a medical case. There. Uh, and, oh, neuropazine. That's quite nice, isn't it? Anyway, back up uh, here, this leads out to, well, there's a locker here with a pocket secretary, and I think this has another uh, code on it. Um, maybe for one of the security rooms, I forget. Um, and then up here leads into the, uh, on the left is the garage that we were in earlier where we were hacking vaults. And there's a vent up there to the right that leads into um, Lucek's Libations, or whatever it's called. I'll get there and show you the map. But it leads into a back room. You get 300 Pathfinder for it, so since you're here, it's worth poking around. There's a hacking door the other side of that, so don't open it. Ludwig's Lounge. There we are. That's where that goes to. But yeah, that vent is basically where it leads back to the garage vaults um, if you wanted to go through the maintenance tunnels that way. But it's easier to switch off the gas from that side. Anyway, back into the server room. Uh, see, this robot's popped out. I don't quite know why. Probably because, I, honestly, I don't know why. Um, anyway, there's a few uh, things to hack in here. I was going to go, okay, now we're done in there, and then realized I hadn't actually hacked any of the vaults. <laughs> silly, silly me. Um, so let's go and deal with those. Only the ones that are in red have got anything in them. I've opened all the others, but there's no point. 1305 was one of the codes we got. Uh, there's a credit chip with 3,000 credits on it. You've just stolen Granny's inheritance. 2357, that's another one we picked up. There's a pocket secretary in there without very much of any importance whatsoever. Uh, there, you can read it, but there's nothing useful on it. Um, this one you'll need to hack. Uh, I don't think there's anything good in there. Maybe it's, oh, stealth software. Okay, great. Um, and in here, some Typhoon ammo, Nanoblade ammo, and uh, Tesla cartridge. And then our final hack door here, I think, is for Neuropazine. Yeah, there we go. Yay for Neuropazine. And that's that place cleared out. Uh, now, over to Executive Keycard B. Again, we're going to go into the security room at the back first. Wait for the doors to open. If you run straight in, you'll activate the laser grid, and that sucks more than anything. The secret switch here is down on the bottom left, and there's a computer you can hack somewhere. I can't quite remember where. Um, that actually has a photo of the secret buttons on it, so that's how I found those. I just couldn't find it again, which probably means it's on the third floor. There's the passcode that I think we got in the first security room. I honestly lose track of which passwords it came from where, so if you need that or a multi-tool or whatever... Don't be afraid to use those, and you should be fine on multi-tools from hacking the um, vaults earlier. See, some cameras on, some cameras off, some robots on, some robots off. Who knows why? In there, credit chips and uropazine. In here, 1110. Uh, this is a code. I forget where we got this one. Um, anyway. I think I blew far too much software trying to hack it just for some credits. And yeah, multi-tool and a credit chip. <laughs> Boo hiss. Uh, and a bio cell in there. Hurrah! Did I actually? Yeah, we hacked the security computer, didn't we? Flip the button, and in here, uh, I'm going to run this hack slowly because this one's the Praxis kit. Um, so the way I did this uh, was to. Um, Anomaly well, I got busted almost immediately, as you can see, but I went back and fortified the node. That gives you at level 3 fortify an extra few seconds. I've got four stopworms, and I think I end up nuking quite a lot there. Um, nuke here and nuke here, along with a stop one. Because I didn't really fancy waiting for two level 5 hacks to go through with only one second. And that would burn all my stop worms, but there we go. Praxis kit. Woo woo! Um, yeah, don't be afraid, you can always use a multi-tool, of course. Uh, what's in this one? I forget. This one's a little bit tricky just because of the way the arrows are aligned and there's four nodes to hack. Oh, breach software. Yeah, so don't miss that one. 
Um, I think there's two more in here, maybe? There's usually two more. 6641, no idea where we picked that up, but it's somewhere on our travels. Oh, that was off the dude in the... Um, that was off the dude in the sewers, wasn't it? Anyway, hackity, hackity, hack, hack, hack. Another slow one for your enjoyment, just to see how I do these things. I've used a data scan software here, uh, which are useful because they show where the breaches are. And after all that, I didn't find a data scan thing anyway. About a thousand credits, not even 700 credits in there, maybe. And then uh, one security door to hack over here. This one, I think, actually ended up giving me quite a lot of trouble. Um, but there was no... I lied. I went straight for the green thing because there were no data things to pop in there anyway. Like I said, I always think there's going to be hacking software in there, but there never is. Now, down this vent, if you carry on all the way to its natural end, this is where you get into the other security room. Now, what you want to do is remote hack this uh, blind, the frosted glass, um, electrochromic glass switch, and then you're probably going to want to use a... Um, I say probably want to use a bias cell. I'm lying, actually. You don't need a bias cell at all because he never saw us. Hide the body there, sneak up behind this fellow, punch him in the back of the head. Bonk. Um, and then you can again loot this place with impunity. Don't miss the security computer so that you can switch everything off. Um, I actually had quite a lot of fun tossing people into vents earlier, but uh, then it got boring. You can also, one, if you put those two in vents, you can just throw boxes around in that room with the door open and all the guards in the main area will come out and see you. Oh, uh, this is the one with the image. Not okay, here, if you click A, see? There we go. Um, so then that was how I knew to look for another secret switch in the other one. Biocell in there. Stun gun, ammo, and a weapons crate at the end, along with uh, some little bits and pieces of software as well. Security computer there, so make sure to get that. And then I think everything's already off. I've just switched all those robots on because I'm a fool. It was very weird, because look, you can see the robots where they are on the thing on the left, but then when you actually look at them through the thing... I'm just mumbling now, I'm sorry. Anyway, don't miss the credit chips and all that good stuff as well. And then back out through the vent when you're done. Uh, and a little bit of ammo there, yay. But that's pretty much it, we're done. We've hacked the safes, uh, we've cleaned this place out, um, we've done the ground floor and uh, floor minus one. If you want to ghost and get some final experience for hacking the front door there, you absolutely can. I'm not going to be ashamed to admit that that's exactly what I did. 75 black hat, and I didn't get um, a <laughs> bonus for first time, as you may have noticed, that one I think took a couple of goes. Um, but yeah, as I said, on the left, uh, Samazad, uh, mission 5, that's where we go up and deal with the mechanical puzzle and the third floor of the bank, so if you need that to check it out, there's breach kit, Praxis software, and all sorts of other good things up there. And on the right, I'm not sure what I'm going to put there. Let's do uh, the Hella mission side, mission 6010110000. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye.